Welcome to the Managing Clients and Responding to Threats lesson. SolucelL's help desk receives calls related to client installation issues, outdated virus definitions, and malfunctioning or disabled protection technologies. The SEP team needs a way to monitor their semantic endpoint protection environment and proactively resolve issues before it reaches the help desk. In this lesson, you follow SolucelL as they use the client's view to monitor semantic endpoint protection and respond to issues. The client's view enables you to conduct the health check and review the environment's security status. After you know the status of your endpoints, you resolve security issues by running commands on clients or groups. The lesson objectives are shown on the slide. This is the Introducing the Client's View topic. The client's view provides a real-time operation status and protection status of clients and computers in your network. The client's view is used to conduct a health check that shows which computers have the latest policies and virus definitions. You also can review the security status by ensuring protection technologies are enabled. You verify that clients are running the latest version of semantic endpoint protection and patches by examining system information. After you know the status of your endpoints, you resolve security issues by running commands on clients or groups. Use the View option to determine the type of information the SEPM displays. For example, if you need to verify protection technologies are enabled, you change to the Protection Technology view. View options also include information for verifying clients have the latest policies and virus definitions. To view client details, select the client, right-click, and select Edit Properties to view client details. If you need more information on a particular endpoint, review the client properties. The General tab provides system information about the computer. You can view the computer name, whether it's on an Active Directory domain or workgroup, and the logged-in user. System information is helpful to gather when troubleshooting a variety of different issues. If you are seeing an issue that's impacting a particular operating system or hardware, you can identify endpoints that are using it. You can also check deployment information if the environment is in an active upgrade. You can also view network components when troubleshooting issues on the endpoint. If the client is having communication issues, ensure the endpoint is receiving a network configuration from DHCP and is using DNS or WINS resolution. View the IP, MAC address information, and default gateway for connecting to the Internet. Use the Clients tab to conduct a health check of the endpoint. In an active deployment, verify if the client has been upgraded or received a client security patch. To ensure the client is healthy, you examine policy and virus definition information. You also can review the host integrity status and confirm that generic exploit mitigation is enabled. For manual remediation, use the User Info tab to view details about the machine owner without having to go into Active Directory. To set user collection in the Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager, see the KB listed on the slide. This is the Using the Display View Options subtopic. Depending on the information that you're looking for about a particular endpoint, you can also set display options. The default view allows you to determine whether the client is communicating and also see general information about the system. You see the IP address, client version, and if a restart is needed with the client status view. You display the enabled protection features enabled for each client with the protection technology view. You examine the network configuration including IP address, DNS or WIND server, MAC address, and gateway with network information. You identify the physical properties of a client computer, including operating system, memory, and disk space. Following Semantics recommendations, SolucelL uses the client's view to manage computers in the environment. Anthony and Angela can use the client's page to do a health check of the environment. Health check steps include ensuring that endpoints have definitions within three days and making sure that protection technologies like AutoProtect are enabled. 
SolusCellCan can also use the Client's View to ensure the endpoints are communicating with the SEPM and have the latest policies. It's critical that endpoints can communicate with the SEPM in the scenario that SolusCell experiences an outbreak and the SEP team needs to deploy a more stringent set of policies. Restrictive policies would be used to contain the threat and prevent it from spreading. Examples include adding a firewall rule that blocks the threat from communicating with a command and control server or assigning an elevated virus and spyware policy. Anthony and Angela can also proactively identify clients that need to be upgraded to the latest version of SEP or are running a particular Windows operating system. The following slide shows how SolusCell uses the client's view to monitor their semantic endpoint protection environment. This is the monitoring SEP clients using the client's view topic. To monitor semantic endpoint protection, you can also search for information about the clients, client computers, and users to make informed decisions about the security of your network. If you have recently added new users or computers to the SEPM, you can use search to identify endpoints that need client software installed. Search is also used to review computers with outdated virus definitions or those needing the latest SEPM policy. This can help you conduct a health check of the environment or verify it is protected against a new threat. You can also use the search to troubleshoot a client deployment by searching for endpoints with a particular client version or operating system. Use the search clients view to locate endpoints by mode or group. The search clients view gives the option to find client computers based on whether the endpoint is in computer or user mode. You can also browse to a particular group and choose whether to search subgroups. After choosing a mode and whether you want to search for a particular group, you specify the search criteria. In this example, SolusCell is looking for standard SEP client installations in the environment. To specify the search, click in the empty cell and select the criteria you want to use from the drop-down menu. Then, select a comparison operator from the drop-down. Once you specified a comparison operator, enter a new value or predefined value. Click Search and review the results. This slide lists the available operators you can use to specify the search criteria. Note the Like operator places a wildcard or percentage character at both the beginning or end of the string you typed. The query locates any strings that begin with, end with, and contain the value you typed. SolusCell uses the search feature to locate endpoints which need semantic endpoint protection 14. Anthony and Angela can locate endpoints based on client version, install type, operating system, and even using the group update providers field. In this example, SolusCell chooses to search for client versions not equal to SEP14. They want to specify a wildcard operator to query only endpoints running a Windows operating system. SolusCell chooses the standard install type to exclude VDI and embedded installations. They can also search for endpoints acting as a group update provider. If this was a new SEP14 deployment, Clients acting as group update providers are upgraded before other semantic endpoint protection clients. This is the exporting the client list from the semantic endpoint protection manager subtopic. You can use the export feature to save the search to a text file. You could use a list of client computers for manual remediation with your help desk team or compile information for management. You import the text file into applications like Microsoft Excel and filter by domain or operating system. See the KB listed on the slide for more information. This is the Set a Display Filter in the Client's View subtopic. Use the Display Filter dialog box to filter the clients for the group that you selected. You can choose to display only computers that run on Windows, Mac, or Linux, or View client computers based on the type of account the clients have. The Set Display filter can also be used to identify added computers that don't have semantic endpoint protection installed. You can check to exclude offline non-persistent clients in virtual desktop infrastructures. Depending on the number of results per page, 
you set the maximum number of entries displayed per page. This is the Responding to Incidents using the Client's View topic. You respond to incidents or new events using the Run Command feature. You identify clients that need remediation by using the Client's View or Search feature. You respond by sending Run Command and then monitor using the Command Status tab in the Monitors section. Note that Run Commands rely on heartbeat interval. Therefore, the client will not receive the command until checking in with the Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager. You can locate the heartbeat interval in the Client Communication Settings in Clients below the Policies tab. You can run commands remotely on individual clients or an entire group from the console. Run commands include updating content on computers with outdated virus definitions and dispatching a scan. When reviewing the security status of your environment, take action on detections that require a reboot or run power eraser on heavily infected systems. If you are conducting a health check, review the operational status of client computers and enable protection technologies. The Collect File Fingerprint List command is also available to update the whitelist for client computers that use system lockdown. Note, for best results, run the Collect File Fingerprint List on a golden image. A golden image is also known as a template or clone from a corporate server, desktop, or virtual machine. To learn more about this topic, see Hardening Clients with System Lockdown in the Semantic Endpoint Protection 14 configure and protect course. Sending an update content command initiates a live update session on the client computer. The endpoint will receive the latest content from live update. Windows clients support all three scan types, whereas Mac and Linux clients support only the custom scans specified in the virus and spyware protection policy. You can also reboot computers recently upgraded or take action on detections. To configure restart options, browse to General Settings below the Policies tab. You specify the method based on the severity of the incident. If you can only reboot a computer within a particular change window, use the Delayed Restart option. You can also select whether a prompt should display informing the user that a reboot is imminent. You can also customize the notification message and other options. Note that restart options apply only to Windows clients. Mac clients perform a hard reboot. Linux clients ignore the command. For more information, see the KB listed on the slide. Power Eraser does not scan every file on the machine. Use Power Eraser to perform a load point analysis of an endpoint that you suspect to be infected. Power Eraser examines load points and load point disk locations, running processes, and installed services. After running Power Eraser, you review the detection list in the Scan or Risk log and then select an action. Use Power Eraser only in emergency situations when computers exhibit instability or have a persistent problem. Typically, you run Power Eraser on a single computer or small group of computers you should not run other applications at the same time. In some cases, a regular scan event alerts you to run a Power Eraser analysis. Power Eraser is only supported on Windows clients. For more information, see the KB listed on the slide. In addition to checking the operational status of clients and enabling protection technologies, you can also use the Run Command feature to troubleshoot problems. The slide lists some common use cases for disabling protection technologies. Note that if the protection technology causes a problem with an application, it is better to create an exception or firewall rule than permanently disable protection. Use the Collect File Fingerprint List command to update a whitelist for system lockdown. Before updating the whitelist, determine the method that system lockdown uses. Whitelist means that System Lockdown allows applications to run a specific list. Running System Lockdown with a blacklist configuration will block certain applications. After collecting the file fingerprint list, test System Lockdown. Then, check the unapproved application list and enable System Lockdown. 
For more information on this topic, see the KB listed on the slide. This slide summarizes the lesson. For more information about the topics discussed in this lesson, refer to the resources listed on the slide, and remember to frequently check the Semantic Support website.